We're here with our mascot, the Story Dude. So please, like the video, subscribe to Story Dude, and let's get into the story. A guy I am seeing insists suddenly on coming to my place on his birthday when we had plans to go out. We are dating for about 4 weeks or so. I am 21F and he is 25M. Things are going well, he is sweet, funny and affectionate. But he tries too hard. Every time we go out he pays for everything. He cancels his plans with his mates to see me instead. He tells me how beautiful and hot I am like 10 times a day. He is not a creep and I do get good vibes from him. For his birthday in a week we were supposed to go out and celebrate it. He even recommended a restaurant that he really likes. So we planned to go there. Out of blue he called me saying he would rather come to mine for his b-day. I tried to be playful and be like oh no it's no fun to be inside. He kept pushing until I said we will see. He said he wanted to have it eventually. I had told him that I want to things slow like a week ago and now this happens. I don't feel comfortable with him pushing for it when I am not ready and the more he compliments me the more it freaks me out. He is a good guy and I know that. My question is to how to tell him that I would rather spend the b-day out and not have him over? Thanks. Edit 1. Please check out my most recent post where I uploaded out chats edit 2. Thanks so much for all the kind comments and not being judgmental. Edit 3. I am so thankful for all of you. We broke up and we are done. As much as I liked if he was the one. I didn't want to spend my time explaining why I wasn't ready for sex. Thanks. You'd better tell him point blank that he isn't getting it for his birthday because he clearly expects that is happening. He's showing some controlling tendencies and a slight red flag location flag situation I'm afraid. It may be seen as cute he's ringing you a lot but I imagine the moment you ignore or say back off he will show his true colors. Definitely a situation to watch. I'm sorry and hope I'm wrong. Take care and be your own person. Have a great weekend buddy thumbs up let us know how you get along. Why is he grabbing my leg so hard? I, F25, recently started seeing a man, M33, that I met on Tinder. We've been out together five times since I met him last week and I am very interested to put it lightly lol. He seems like a really great guy. One thing I am wondering about is his physical touches. We've only gotten as far as kissing at this point. I am intentionally going at a very slow pace because I'm at a point in my life where I'm interested in something more serious relationship-wise. With that being said, I can tell that he is super into physical touch and PDA like holding hands, hugging, even on our first date he kissed me in the bar we were at. I should add that these are all welcome touches that I enjoy. One thing I keep wondering about is the way he grabs my leg. He likes to have his hand on my thigh under the table which I like too because it makes me feel close to him in a way that's just between the two of us. Problem is he will grab it so hard that it becomes painful. It seems to be the more he drinks the harder his grip becomes. He knows that it is painful to some extent because I will casually try to get him to loosen his grip. I think maybe he's just trying to be playful, but last night he made some comment jokingly about how he felt like he was going to leave bruises. This morning I woke up and am genuinely in pain. Does anyone have an experience like this or know if there is some sort of underlying motivation or intention for his actions? Hey, that hurts, please stop. And if he doesn't stop, he's hurting you on purpose and you should leave. Hash hash to see if you will stand up for yourself. He's got two strikes. Tell him you don't like it and to stop. The next time he is, accidentally, too forceful while drinking, or, jokes, about hurting you that's three strikes and he's out. I don't have any advice, but this is strange and would freak me out. He likes hurting you and leaving bruises, that's his kink. And he's not asking for consent before he does it. You need to spell it out that you don't like it and tell him to stop. Or recognize the huge red flag that joking about hurting you was and run, now. My stepdaughter's mother cut her hair against her will. Reposted to correct a confusing auto-correct mistake in the title. I'm doing this on a throwaway because I know my husband's ex is on Reddit a lot, and she knows my other account. But I just need some objective advice from people who don't know me or her. I'm 27 female. My husband is 35 male and my stepdaughter is 12. My husband's ex-wife is 37. My husband was married to his ex for 8 years. She was abusive and controlling. Because of this, my husband and I have primary physical and legal custody of my stepdaughter Evie. Her mother sees her Friday afternoon until Sunday morning. Two hours after she arrived at her mother's house yesterday Evie called my husband, 
sobbing so hysterically she could barely speak, she just showed us her hair. Her mother cut her hair, unevenly, from mid-back length to under her ears. It looked like she used a pair of dull kitchen scissors. Her ends were completely split and frayed. There were big chunks missing from certain parts and other parts were still long. Her mother did this as punishment for something my stepdaughter did weeks ago. Boys at school were bullying her over her chest size and the teacher basically just told them stop. And they didn't. So my stepdaughter shoved one of them off one of their play structures, and did something similar to the other. Her father and I didn't support what she did and we told her better ways to deal with a situation like that if it arises again. But with that being said I'm happy she stuck up for herself and in the end if she feels like she needs to protect herself then so be it. Even so, she got two days suspension for it. Her father and I told her she couldn't have any screen time or go out with her friends for those two days. She understood, and took her consequence well. Her mother didn't think that was, punishment, enough. She wanted her grounded, no screen or social time including extracurricular activities until the end of the month. Her father and I agreed that was way too harsh. And we told her that but she kept insisting. Finally my husband told her she could punish our daughter the way she wanted to when she got custody of her. We had an appointment to get her hair cut and dyed that weekend and my stepdaughter's mother kept texting my husband to cancel it but we didn't see a reason to. Her punishment was already over. So that's why when she went over her mother's house her mother hacked her hair off. She was so upset. Her father didn't let me get out of the car because I honestly didn't know what was going to come out of my mouth. I was so angry. She got into the car and the poor girl just cried into my arms for about 15 minutes. I called the hair salon and begged them for an appointment. Thank goodness one of the girls there decided to stay hours past her scheduled shift to fix up Evie's hair we told her she could do whatever she wanted and she ended up getting a really cute pixie cut with some color. It ended up looking really cute and she walked out of the salon with a smile but I'm not going to lie I still spent all night last night crying. I can't come to terms with how scared and hurt Evie must have felt as her mom was doing this to her. I don't ever want to send her over there again. She's calling my husband telling him that she expects him to drop off Evie back at her house after she gets up because this is her visitation weekend. I don't see how we could ever be expected to leave her there unsupervised again. The reason why I'm looking for advice here is because everyone in my personal life's opinions are skewed by personal opinions, past history, etc. Everyone here is objective. My husband's ex-wife is making it out like this was just a consequence of her actions and I'm too soft and don't understand how mothering works since I don't have any kids of my own, which is true, I don't, but I'm currently four months pregnant and I've been taking care of Evie for years. I think what she did was horrible and I still get shaky when I think about it. Can I please have some perspective on this situation from you all, who aren't involved in it? Thank you all so much for reading this, have a great day. And hash x200b. Clarifying on the two-day screen time, social time ban her father and I gave her after this incident and what we were, and were not punishing her for, copied from some relevant comments. And hash x200b. We made it very clear what we were, and were not punishing her for. Sticking up for yourself is always okay, and even using physical force to harm someone else is okay if you're sticking up for yourself. However, she did go a step further and assault one of the boys even after he was very clearly already down, and no longer a threat. We want to make it clear to her that physical force is to be used only to protect yourself. Once the threat is gone, you should no longer hurt anyone, whether they deserve it or not. And hash x200b. It is not up to my 12-year-old to decide what corporal punishment she should inflict on another 12-year-old. It is up to her to protect herself, and get herself out of potentially dangerous situations. Which she did, and she was not punished for that. She was punished for taking it a step further. And again, all of this was made clear to her, and she understood. And hash x200b. I want to raise my stepdaughter to know what is self-defense, and what is assault. I am very proud that she stuck up for herself, even prouder that she took it upon herself to do something about it when the teacher had supposedly, dealt with it. What I am not proud of is her taking a large stick and hitting him in the face with it as he repeatedly begged her to stop. Did he learn a lesson? Yes. Was the lesson already learned before she did that? Yes, absolutely. I am going to raise her to know how to walk the line between self-defense and felony. We did speak to our daughter's therapist about this incident, and she agreed with our responding actions. Her therapist also spoke to Evie about the incident. Besides, it's not as though she was locked in her room those two days. The no screen time was a godsend. 
I took off of work to stay with her and we gardened, hiked, and went pumpkin picking. We painted rocks and hid them near her friend's bus stops for them to find when they got out of school. I taught her how to knit and she's now started a blanket for her future sister. We really enjoyed our time together. And on a final note, thankfully, Evie really loves her new haircut. She's definitely feeling herself this morning. This is abuse, plain and simple. I would urge your husband to contact his lawyer immediately and try to get her visitation revoked. Did either of you take a picture of her hair before you got it fixed? It may help your case. And at 12 years old, the judge may ask Evie's opinion of the situation and let her decide. You and your husband could go back to court and have the mother's visitation rights altered or revoked. I think Evie's mother posted at am I the asshole and got told out very much. Evie's mother is abusive. Extremely and shouldn't be allowed to see her alone again. That should of course be up to Evie but whatever Evie wants, she's old enough to know, advocate for that until the very end. First of all, you're not too soft. Being uncomfortable with leaving the kid at that woman's place after what happened is normal. I do say you look for legal advice, since you have legal custody, nobody should be able to cut your child's hair without permission. My husband mentioned that his ex loved him the most in the world and I feel upset. My 29F husband, 31M, have been dating for the last 1.5 years, married for 3 months. Ours was a short engagement as we both didn't want to wait to get married and start a family. He and I both had serious relationships with other people a long time ago, and neither of them are in our lives anymore. My husband is usually an introverted and shy person. He enjoys a few beers on the weekend, which gets him to open up and be more casual in his conversations. He never drinks enough to be drunk, but enough to get slightly tipsy and cheerful. I don't drink, but I enjoy our conversations because he is more chatty, more open about his feelings about anything, and tells me stories from his part that he ordinarily wouldn't talk about. Noting serious or alarming, just regular things. Last weekend, after he was a bit tipsy, we were talking about love in general. I don't know how we got there, but he casually mentioned that he thinks no one has ever loved him the way his ex-girlfriend loved him. That he knows that I love him a lot, but there was something about that, first love, feeling that she gave him that is irreplaceable. The way she looked at him, the love in her eyes, how she was there for him no matter what, how he could depend on her for anything, how they were just meant to be, etc. He then looked at me, and with all earnestness, said that he loves me and how happy he is. He never said anything about his feelings for her, just about how she made him feel. They broke up when they were 24 when she moved away, it was an amicable breakup, and he hasn't been in touch with her at all. Doesn't even know where she is right now, and doesn't use Facebook or Instagram. I understand that the feeling of, first love, is something very special. But I feel very awkward, and slightly hurt, to hear him say such things about his ex. I didn't see love in his eyes for her, but there was a lot of admiration for her character. A part of me just died I think when I heard him say that. I quickly excused myself to go to the bathroom to stop him from seeing how upset I was. He doesn't have a clue how upset it made me. To the folks of our relationship underscore advice, is it common to have such feelings for your ex without it meaning anything? Is my being upset justified? I don't think this is super serious, but I'm still upset and haven't stopped thinking about it this whole week. Your being upset is justified. Your husband is not only an introvert, but he is also clueless. First love is a big event in your life, but marriage is bigger. I would let him know that it upset you so he won't say anything that stupid again. You need to communicate to him exactly how it felt. I had his first love as well but that love was nothing compared to the person I asked to marry me. He is clueless and you need to have an honest talk about your feelings. Don't keep it in it will fester then explode or deep, deep resentment will set in. Talk to him. Love is weird. The love he experienced with her doesn't have to be compared with the love you two have. Love isn't a finite thing. Also, he knows that you have had serious relationships too. As we get older, there's more experiences in the mix. I'm guessing you have a first love experience yourself. Talk to him and let him know how you feel and try to move on together.